land concentration is not uh, a recent phenomenon, but is the result of how land has been managed in Colombia uh, since the country has been independent, since the beginning of the 19th century. Rural elites and regional rural elites controlled large uh, amounts of land, large plots of land, as a means to control also political and economic power. So when the demands for democratization and redistribution of land arrived at the end of the 19th century and the beginnings of the 20th century, uh, there was a large, in many regions, there was a large and very powerful uh, landed elites trying to block the, the possibility of land redistribution because of they perceived that as a threat for their economical and political power. But this also happened in the 80s and in the 90s with more than uh, 7 million people victimized uh, or forcibly displaced from the from their rural land. So this could also explain why land is actually so this, at this level of concentration in, in Colombia. What I think that, that would be a, a most equal, more democratic uh, land, redistri land distribution in Colombia is having uh, more properties, more land owners that have access to more land. One distribution that is needed to do is to reduce the number of hectares that is being controlled and owned by these large owners and at the same time trying to increase the number of hectares that uh, are having access currently the small producers or the small peasants. So for each hectare of one small peasant or one small uh, owner of land, you have at the same time a large scale owner that has 200 hectares of land. So this is a very unequal distribution. Those uh, cattle ranchers, those uh, large scale owners of, uh, of land, are precisely representing the rural elites that have been opposing for more than 60 years to the implementation of land redistribution policies. But it's comprehensive in the sense that it's given a more integral perspective of the transformations that should be enforced in the rural areas in Colombia. So by the first time, a rural reform program is talking about uh, social rights, is talking about housing, is talking about education, is talking about social security, is talking about environmental um, conservation, is talking about so many different layers that are critical to promote a real or more profound transformation of the of the rural areas in Colombia. And this is very important. A rural dweller or a rural inhabitant has less opportunities to have access to a formal job, has less opportunities to have access to education, have less opportunities to have access to quality health services and so on and so on. So the chapter is trying to take that into account in order to balance and to try to level up the um, social conditions in which rural inhabitants live currently in the, in the country. And this is very important. But it has limitations as well because uh, the goal of the agreement is, is to redistribute 3 million hectares of land. So probably the, the, the increase of uh, land or, of foreign or formal land rights could also mean an increase of the, of the possibility of seeing uh, the land as more equally distributed but only in the numbers, not because in the reality is going to change, because formalization is only uh, a possibility to, for the state to manage what is not, being, what is not manage, manageable at some point. So it's, it's, like the, it's like the possibility to transform the figures without transforming the reality. The other obstacle well, is, the strong, is the strong political opposition. Um, from uh, a very conservative uh, and red-wing uh, political uh, parties are, uh, or, or political stakeholders in the so Colombian society. So this year we have elections and probably one of the disputes over political groups is going to be 
the implementation of the peace agreement because there is this large uh, political group that are, is opposing against the implementation and they have a very good possibility of having uh, of, of recovering power in, in terms of the presidential elections. This is one obstacle. And the other obstacle is, a, is an obstacle of the technical capacity of the state. Many um, economists have said that at least uh, that the most expensive part of the peace agreement is particularly the agrarian point, because it's the one that demands the most, um, most funds in order to be enforced. So there is another large difficulty in terms of where is this money going to come from. Transitional justice could also be understood as a way to, um, to balance or to pay historical debts that uh, the state had with towards of a specific population, in this case, the peasantry. So it is recognized that, for instance, uh, peasants didn't have any possibility to have access to justice when they faced um, land conflicts or land disputes. Some, somehow, the, the, the transitional justice scenario which is bringing is the possibility for, for paying those historical debts that, uh, that urban elites and, and the government had with, uh, with the rural dwellers for more than 60 years. Regardless of having this unequal distribution of land, we can have peace if we have another means to transform this kind of disputes that are going to continue emerging because the peace agreement is, going not, is not going to solve the structural inequalities that the Colombian society has right now. However, what we are seeing right now is the emergence of new cycles of violence between legal and illegal actors against the civil society. And the challenge of the, of the state right now is to keep these kind of actors that gave uh, birth to FARC guerrilla out of the, of the possibility of, the, of using violence for demanding transformations by uh, enforcing the, the peace agreement, is by fulfilling their commits, that the, the, the commitments that the, the, the state have made with this armed actor. And this is one of the most greatest challenges that the country is facing right now, because as you have uh, probably heard, we have now more than 100 social leaders murdered uh, since the peace agreement was signed. And this is very concerning because it's one indicator that things in the territories in which the implementation of the peace agreement must bring um, a most peaceful environment is not actually happening.